What's good everybody? Before we start today's video, I want to let you guys know Monday, April 4th, we're dropping a new suit collection from my company, The Standard. The Standard is not only a luxury suit line, but it's also a community of extraordinary men striving for greatness. Go ahead and sign up for the waiting list at theaffluentstandard.com. I look forward to seeing you all join The Standard and let's get started with today's video. We're built to challenge ourselves. Yeah. Like, if you don't challenge yourself as a man, you're going to feel lost. Mm. Like, in my opinion, you know, you have to understand, historically, our challenge was the village was being plummeted and we have to go to war. There were certain men they sent out to fight the war and certain men that stayed home to protect the village. Mm. Which one would you have been? <laughs> they sent me out. <laughs> <laughs> they sent they me out. Yeah. They I love out. it. Yeah. I love it. And... <laughs> So we're built to be challenged yeah. and we define ourselves through our challenge and we discover ourselves through challenging ourselves. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate thing about society today is that in a lot of ways, positive masculinity is being attacked. Mm. And so we can't challenge ourselves in the ways that we used to challenge ourselves. Mm. And as a result, we're able to do that through a gaming console when we play Black Ops. Yo, what's good, everybody? It's Hafiz. Chris, the star of the show, baby. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back. Welcome back. We are in Atlanta, Georgia. Back in Atlanta, man. Always. You got to always love hot Atlanta. Hot Atlanta. <laughs> Honestly, it is pretty hot today. It's a pretty hot day. And we are excited because we have a brand new roommate that we'd like to introduce you guys to. I think one of the biggest things that you guys will see in this platform is we're always talking about men becoming the best version of themselves and we always talk about physically emotionally spiritually and financially but i'm telling you a lot of guys neglect the physical yeah that's something i know at times i neglect the physical <laughs> and so i'm really excited to bring to you someone who's going to help men become the best version of themselves physically in regards to their health and well-being. So without further ado, please welcome to the show the one and only Dr. Bobby. Man, glad to be here. What up, yes, man? man? How you feel? I hope you feel good. Man, I'm excited. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, I've, I've been watching your conversations and, um, you know, I feel like women have this safe space for them to have conversations. Mm -hmm. And it's really good to, to know that you guys are creating that safe space for us you know, to talk about not just about women, but talk about how do we evolve and become better men as well. I yeah. love it. I love yeah. it. So, so Dr. Bobby, we know who you are. So for the people who don't know who you are, can you share a bit of an elevator pitch synopsis about who you are and what you do? Yeah. So um, by trade, I'm a pharmacist. I uh, went to pharmacy school, graduated, came out of pharmacy school and um, really got really successful very quick. Within two years of graduating, um, I got awarded the most innovative pharmacist in Georgia. Wow. And um, that was really like the point of my life where everything, everything changed because it was like, why did I get this award so early? And um, part of it was because I made a lot of shifts in my life. How old were you at that time? Probably 28. Wow. Yeah, oh, at 28. Wow. And so... Um, you know, what had happened when I came out of school, I gained a lot of weight because I was working in the hospital and that mm -hmm. help, happens to actually a lot of healthcare professionals. I know, so oxymoronical, huh? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so same thing with me, I gained an extra 30 pounds. Mm. And um, in addition to the 15 pounds I grabbed while I was in school. <laughs> and so um, now I'm like realizing like, I'm a healthcare professional, but I'm unhealthy. Mm. And I had been diagnosed with high blood pressure when I was 16, mm. despite being an athlete, I only had like 5% body fat, still had high blood pressure. And so I, was, I finally said I needed to do something about my health. And so I started trying everything, P90X, CrossFit, <laughs> Jenny Craig, yeah. Nutri System, whatever I could find. Nothing really worked. Nothing, none of the weight came off. Uh, the energy wouldn't come back. The inflammation was still in my body. And so really out of desperation, I said, you know what? I'll try to go plant-based, see how it works. I was very skeptical. I'm from the, my mom is from the South. She cooks like mm -hmm. she, yeah. a, 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 a restaurant queen. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, I just decided I was gonna do it for 21 days. In 21 days, I lost 17 pounds. Oh, wow. But also my testosterone went up. 
Mm. And my blood pressure went down. Wow. So for me, it was like, okay, I said 21 days, but. Now we're talking about 21 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let, let, me, let me do at least 30. There we go. <laughs> and so after about 60 days, I lost 45 pounds, normalized my blood pressure. Mm. And, um, you know, I quit my job. I took a job in Japan, worked there, studying a group of people for about four years. And then I left there just traveling the world, studying with herbalists, natural healers, things of that nature. So went to about 36 different countries in about two years. And so came back here, wrote the book, Veducation Over Medication. Mm. And uh, now I'm here with you guys. Mm. No, nah, that's oh, that's interesting it. because I love how you have the the technical side with, you know, the, the, the school yep. route. Yep. But then you've also explored the holistic side yep and so what what made you lead to more of a holistic direction like what were some of the reasons that you decided to go that route well one of them was you know um my grandmother my great grandmother lived till she was 105. Mm. Wow. my grandmother her daughter only lives to 67. Hmm. and so i remember my great grandmother's lifestyle it was very different from my grandmother's. Mm. And so I what went- What was the biggest difference? Biggest difference was my great grandmother lived on a farm. She ate out of her backyard. Mm. You know, there was an outhouse. I mean, she ate everything natural. And when there was an ailment or issue, she went and grabbed the herb. Mm. Mm. And so I just remembered that as I'm going through my plant-based journey, getting healthy, I'm like, well, great. It worked for great grandmother. She lived to 105. I mean, she was fully conscious at 105. I mean, she died quietly in her sleep, and it reminded me of the people I was studying in Okinawa. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, maybe I need to get back to that. And so that's really what pushed me to say, well, let me look into this holistic side of things, because if it healed me, maybe it can heal somebody else or something different. Mm. Yeah. Man, like with, there's people watching, right? Now I'm be one of them. When well, they hear plant-based, <laughs> we really do no chicken, mm -hmm. you know, no steak. Mm -hmm. Man. And and you you know you done the research obviously worked on you yeah so when people hear that you know especially people in our community yeah. they don't want no part of it yeah, so why yeah. would you what is the benefits of going plant based versus you know taking the traditional route that we always used to yeah yeah well I, that's a great point you made the traditional route because most of the time they call it traditional medicine but it it really isn't it's mm. modern medicine. Yeah. You know, the real tradition of medicine and how we heal ourselves goes back 10,000 years. And it's always been with plants up gotcha. until 1906 when the FDA was formed. Mm. And I know that because I worked for the FDA at one point. And so that was one of the things I always tell people how we look at our history, our families, our ancestors. We always healed ourselves that way. And so, you know, I always tell people you have to first look at how great grandmother lived because it's very different from how we live today. And mm. if you look at it from that standpoint, you know, prior to the 1950s, there were no refrigerators. So you had to get everything fresh. Mm. There That's were no it. supermarkets. Yeah. So you couldn't go half of the foods, probably 90% of the foods today didn't exist in the 1950s. Yeah. We were eating real foods and meat was expensive because you had to refrigerate it, right? Yeah. And you had to go to a butcher to get it. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important for us to understand our great grandparents really couldn't afford meat. So Monday through Saturday, they were eating plant based. And then on Sunday, when the preacher came over, mm -hmm. they had the mm -hmm. food with the meat in it. But we celebrate that Sunday as if it was every day. But it really wasn't. So Sheesh. what what are your thoughts about the different individuals who their cultures are? you know, more of a meat based cultures. Yeah. I think there's there is a nature of, you know, a lot that I agree with a lot that you said in regards to the refrigeration and things along along those lines, how a lot of the food pyramids and things affected them. So are you are what about the cultures for people who are like, well, my culture is traditionally meat based. Do you feel as though that the meat is, is a problem or you think it's the meat that the type of meat that we're consuming today? both okay mm. and what i mean by that is the type of meat we are consuming today is not the type of meat our ancestors ate mm -hmm. so that's the first thing the type of meat we're consuming today unfortunately those animals are eating soy they're eating uh corn they're not eating what they naturally eat and so when you eat them you eat that and most of that is genetically modified so it does affect our bodies in that way 
They also have to put hormones in these animals to make them grow very quickly to keep up with the demand for meat. And then they also have to use antibiotics because these animals get sick. So we end up consuming that too. And each of those things have an impact on our health. Now, culturally, when we look back, like say for instance, like, you know, the most of my friends, my closest friends are Nigerian. And they they eat me. <laughs> <laughs> and what I always tell them, and I, I actually had this conversation with an Indian friend of mine as well, like it's really important. You have to look at the outcomes, right? Mm -hmm. Like what is that getting you? You know, like let's say if you are an entrepreneur and you had a way that you wanted to be an entrepreneur, but it wasn't getting you the results. And so when you start to look in our communities, whether you look at it here in America as African-Americans or you look at it in Nigeria, it's rampant with cancer, it's rampant with diabetes, it's rampant with high blood pressure. And so because of that, you have to look at the habits, whether it's cultural or not, and question the habits. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I also tell them is if you look back a little bit deeper, the same way I did with looking at my great grandmother, when you look back, what you'll discover is most Egyptians who are really Ni Nigerians because the Egyptians went wet, went west after they got invaded. And so Mali and Nigeria, many of them are really Egyptians. Most Egyptians were plant-based, it's documented. Yeah. And so it's really important for us to understand like what is our original history? Because so much time has elapsed, we think that what our current culture is, is the current culture that's al always been in place. Yeah. Another thing I thought I thought about was a was a good conversation to have with you is how a lot of men neglect their health. Mm -hmm. I think when it comes to like finances, men are like superheroes when it yeah. comes to finances. I think when it comes to attaining more material possessions, men are you know obsessed with that. Right, right. But I've I've noticed a trend where a lot of men neglect their health, especially when it goes to checkups and yeah. hospitals and stuff like that. So in your personal opinion, what are some of the reasons why men are very hesitant about going to the doctor, taking care of the health and things like that? For the same reason I neglected my health for 12 years. I mean, I, I was diagnosed when I was 16 with high blood pressure. I never did anything about it. I never took the medications they gave me despite being a pharmacist. I never took the advice that they gave me. It's because when you do something about your health, you have to admit your own frailty. You have to admit that I'm not the Superman that I thought I was. And so for a lot of men, having to have that conversation with their families, having to have that conversation with, the, with themselves is tough. And so quite often, a lot of men neglect their health because what they wanna do is pretend like it doesn't exist. Mm. And so quite often, our fathers, our uncles, our brothers end up dying and uh, all of a sudden we never even know about it. We never even knew they were sick because they've been essentially suffering in silence. And so that's one of the primary reasons is because we have to admit our own frailty and society tells us we have to be a Superman. Mm. And whenever we have a chink in our armor, it means that we're a weak man. That's what society tells us. But that is absolutely not true. You know, the more we get in touch with who we are, the more we get in touch with healing ourselves and being connected with being healthy, actually the stronger we become. Our testosterone goes up, our muscle count goes up. We start to do things that are self-care instead of doing things that are destructive to us. So I would say that's one of the primary things um, that, you know, the reason why a lot of men suffer and silence. Mm. How do we change that conversation? Because I know there's guys that, you know, they have a family, they yeah. have kids, you know, they got their vision, their yes. business, you know, they gotta go work. Yeah. They gotta go make the money. You yeah. know what I mean? And and if we're being honest, you know, going plant based and being more healthy, that also costs more money. Cause it's, in my opinion, I don't know how you feel about that. Oh, we but, can definitely talk mm -hmm. about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cause like like it, it I guess they have this like this theory out there that it costs so much more to be healthy and it's yeah. easier to just consume what's close and what's fast, what's in your area without planning because it's just easy and cheaper. Right. So how do you feel about, what's your pushback on, on that? Like those real world guys that like, you know, I don't have time nor the money to invest in my health basically. Well, the, the, real, the real issue is that they need to change their why around mm -hmm. health. They don't have a why. They don't have a purpose for health. Their purpose is in their work, like most men. 
your purpose is in your work. So that's what you're focused on. You're focused on if I achieve work and if I achieve my ambitions, then what happens is I get all the spoils that come with that. And so for men, our health isn't necessarily attached to, you know, us achieving those things and getting those things that we want. As a matter of fact, when you look at it, when we die, the family gets rich. You understand mm -hmm. that? Like that's a, a really scary concept. You know, we work our lives off and work our asses off, but we end up, when we die, people get rich. What mm -hmm. do you mean by people get rich? Well, think about it. Whatever my labor was, let's say for instance, I had a long-term life insurance policy. Oh, you mean let's say I had that? a pension. Okay. Let's say I had a home I own. When I die, everybody owns that now. Mm -hmm. You understand? So we don't attach ourselves to our health. As a matter of, and then when you put the shoe on the other foot for women, they have to be present for the children. They have to be present to keep make the house a home. You understand that? So we just don't attach ourselves to our health for that reason. And that was one of your, your reasons why you started your journey? Well, for me, one of the most important things was, is I realized that, you know, in changing my health, I was working at Grady Hospital, which is an indigent hospital. And- um, It's a what? Indigent, it's, it okay. serves an indigent pop okay. population. Okay. And black, black. Okay, yeah, black. <laughs> <laughs> black ass hospital. <laughs> black <and> crap. <laughs> but, That's a you know, the cool thing was like, you know, I was the young doctor at the hospital, and when people saw me, they like, so you're a doctor? I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. and they're like, damn, that's cool. <laughs> And I appreciated that. Yeah. And so when people would come in, even though I was a pharmacist, they're talking to their doctor. The doctor's mouthing off. He he doesn't. They don't know what he's saying. Mm. And so they're looking at me like, as soon as he's finished, like I'm going to ask him what the hell going on with me. Mm -hmm. And so because I established that sort of rapport with with people in my community here in Atlanta, you know, like I fit in, indebted to them. Mm. And especially when I went through my own personal transformation and when you look at high blood pressure, it's literally like the silent assassin when it comes to black people. Yeah. You know, like we don't like you can name 10 people in your family right now with, di with diabetes and probably in high blood pressure together. And so I realized that if I could do this for me and then start to do this for my community, I really can change my community. Yeah. And so it changed my why. I think I think. What I've, because I've even examined this in my own life, and I think, you know, wise change when you have children and when you have a wife, and, and, and when you're the single guy and you're trying to establish a life for yourself, you're, yeah. you're really consumed. Your why is really that establishment piece. And I think kind of leads into like part of the other conversation. And I didn't want to go there, but I think I think this is a natural transition. Yeah. But I, I think what happens is like a lot of guys feel as though I have to achieve at a certain level, but right. it costs to achieve at that level. Right. Um I was work I'm sorry, I was working on a theory the other day and I'm literally thinking as you were talking, I was thinking about it. But it's like it's like the idea of I'm, I'm gonna ask you a question before I share the theory. Can are there some people who can function off of five hours of sleep effectively? Yes, and I, I say that reluctantly. Okay, because most people aren't getting restful sleep. Yes, like they're not in deep sleep at all. Mm -hmm. They're not in REM. I think it was yes, called. Yeah, yeah, you got to be in deep sleep. So I can sleep five hours. Yeah. But when I go to sleep, you can break in my house. Mm, you I'm not getting up. <laughs> like, and not because I don't want to, it's because I'm out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, people know that about me. When you I go to sleep, you can do this. And I will not move. Yeah, I'm up. And so, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So I don't I don't sleep like I have enemies. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because I sleep so deep, I only need five, six hours. Is that a technique you learn? That's because A, I'm healthy. Okay. Okay. And it's then <laughs> and it really does make a difference. Yeah. And then I have sleep habits that match, you know, me sleeping deeply. You know, like I don't have a TV in my room. Mm -hmm. You know, I sleep with my phone at least 10 feet, feet away from yeah. me. You know, I, I have all these practices in place. Is it super dark in the room? It's super dark Cold. in the room. The temperature is right. I go to sleep almost with the sun. 
Are you using a, a special pillow or anything? These, nah, are, none these of, are questions people want to ask. None of that good stuff, but you know, like. When See, the, you go to sleep with the sun. What do you mean by that? So when the sun is setting. You go to sleep at that time? Not around that time, yeah. I go like five o'clock? No, no, no. Around about eight or nine. What about during the winter? Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> so around you sleep seven by nine eight. o'clock. Yeah. Let me tell you why. Okay. Because our bodies are really aligned with the sun. I tell people all the time, we're sun people. The same way the moon affects the ocean tide, the, the sun actually affects us. Okay. And this is why so many black people have so many immune issues is because we have a low vitamin D. We're not getting sun exposure anymore because we're above the equator. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you, when the sun starts to go down, our bodies start to naturally release melatonin. Melatonin makes you go to sleep. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. People know that because they be taking that to go to sleep. Right. <laughs> but if you push through the sleepiness that occurs when the sun is going down, because people will notice it like, man, it must be dark. That's when I get. That's when, that's when I wake up, baby. Yeah. That's when I'm in my life, yeah. man. Yeah. And a lot of people push through it. If you push through it, you you'll probably stay up to two or three in the morning. But if you were to go to sleep when you got that initial sleepiness, you would sleep deeply because you would have melatonin. You would have all the other hormones that are being released to tell you to go to sleep. Okay. Yeah. So the reason why I asked you that question is because you know I I agree that you know sleep is healthy, and I love the tips that you gave. But I've also noticed that every there's some people who can function off a little bit of sleep because yeah. they are in REM sleep because the sleeping is is high quality sleep. Right. Like my eight hours of sleep is like most people's four, you know, yeah. what I mean? if not three. Like I do not sleep well sometimes. And what I realized when a lot of guys are trying to work, a lot of men are trying to do this whole eighty hour, 50, 90 hour, hundred yeah. hour work week. Yeah. There are some men who can work that much, sleep that little, and still function, Yeah. but most guys can't. Yeah. And what I've seen happen is that, especially with our, with our community of guys who are very driven and trying to be very successful, every guy is trying to work like an Elon Musk. Yeah. You know, every guy's trying to work like them to get the life that they have, right. but they don't, they don't realize, yo, your body's not built for that much work. Right, right. So I was wondering in your, how can a man find out how much work his body is really built for instead of, you know, working like a madman to keep up with the Joneses and it actually deteriorate his health? Yeah. You know, the, the big thing, bro, about that is, you know, um, I think it's a myth. I, you know, like Gary V has pushed this and We've heard stories about amazing entrepreneurs who did that, but you don't need Elon Musk money. Mm. Like you don't need billions. So you don't need to put in that type of effort. But what if you're like Kobe or Michael and you want to, you just want to be great at what you do. It's not about money. It's about greatness and legacy and you're working hard. What about those guys yeah. who want to work for that I reason? I mean, I'm one of those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like i work hard bro don't think because i go to sleep early i work hard because i wake up early too yeah, yeah yeah um you know like i'm an entrepreneur i haven't worked for somebody in you know almost what eight years now mm -hmm. um i make six figures a month mm -hmm. yeah but i'm balanced but i put that at the forefront you understand and and the other thing is like we we're shifting at, as a human species like it's not about working with this. It's about working with this. And so a lot of us haven't shifted here to start m working smarter. We're still trying to use these to get where we go. And that's why it's so much harder. It's so much harder to use these to get where you want to go, especially if you're ambitious versus using this and then using people. And that's one of the things that I've learned, like has really taken everything forward for me is I'm, I'm not using my hands and I'm not bullying myself to make myself to achieve these things i'd rather work in parallel with people i'd rather work in parallel with my mind and i also rather be aligned because a lot of people aren't in their purpose mm -hmm. and i know this is like woo, woo talk but if you're not in your purpose it's gonna be tougher too yeah like i love what i do yeah i would do it for free but i'm not doing it for free yeah. you feel me yeah. yeah but when you're in your purpose it ain't it's not work yeah. And, you know, that's one of the things I really want to push in our culture, especially with black men, like the importance of 
like using this like we're intelligent we're just not using it in every way that we can hmm so how i, I love where you're going with this one because in a semi-serious way semi-similar way as you i've i've come to realization that some of the messages i communicate for this desire for greatness is based upon in, in my personal opinion my personal purpose yeah that's how i feel so there's a level of 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 zeal and and drive and effort and and work that i put in that obviously i got gotta make a few tweaks for my health but it's it's it's, it's good <laughs> yeah but i see a lot of guys like you said well look at the gary's look at the elon Musk's, look at guys who are crushing it i don't want to go that extreme they look at my let's say they look at like a person like me yeah and they'll try to work and they because they want what i have they'll try to work the way i'm working and will hurt themselves so how does a man understand if he's in line okay with with what he's called to do and then how does a man become content because maybe you know dr bobby might earn a hundred thousand a month or six figures a month whatever it may be but maybe you're not you're called to make six a month yeah. and maybe that's what's best for your health and your body and how god made you right how can a man have that understanding and that nuance instead of working themselves to try to be superheroes yeah and um six is dope too yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it sounds six good not that he's dope. Dope. These you know what I'm <laughs> and you know like the pressure that yeah. society yeah. and even yeah. you know the the pressure that a lot of women put on men it's tough. Yeah. You know, like one of the things I learned when I was in, in Japan was, you know, I was able to see like a lot of soldiers there because they have a lot of bases there. And I was noticing that all of these soldiers were marrying all of these Japanese girls. Mm. And, you know, like I love black women. Yeah. They, they dope. You yeah. know, like I don't have any like, yeah, you yeah. know, like I, it's, I just love black women. Preface yeah. yourself. And, okay. and so just a preface. <laughs> And so, like for me, I was like, what? I was just, I'm a curious person. I'm like, what? Why these guys these Japanese girls? I, I want to know. Yeah. And what I, I had conversations with a few of them. What they told me was, is like, you know, there's no pressure. Like, mm. we drive a Geo. We got an apartment, and she happy with me. Mm -mm, mm -mm, she, mm -mm. I mean, she's doing she all. Must of, not have Instagram. <laughs> she, she, all those things that we want in a wife, like. Mm. She's doing those things. Mm. All I need to do is come home and spend time with my family. Yeah. You know, there's no pressure to have this. There's no pressure to have that. And so for them, I can be a provider without somebody thinking I'm not providing enough. Mm. Because that's a that's a that's a shoulder. Yeah. That's, the, the, that's a lot to hold on a man. So it's really important for men to get in touch with their purpose and get in touch with their why. And th the way I break it down is in life, you got your job and then you got your work. So, you know, your job is what you make money doing. And your work is what you're here to do on this earth. Yeah. No, that's, you know? that's beautifully put because like that pressure was, is what's causing the stress. Yep. Yep. And then that stress is what's causing all the stuff that's on the inside. That's that silent killer that not a lot of people right. are recognizing. Right, right, right. And I, I saw a post the other day. I was mortified by it. The post said that $65,000 is not enough for a man to provide for a family. That was mm. what the post said. Yeah. Mm. And the wife stay at home. It's, it's, that's not enough? Mm. And Because the thing that I thought to myself was the average man makes around $50,000. Yeah. Black or white. Yeah. Mm. The average, so you have is, essentially said the average man is not enough. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm mortified by that kind of thing. And that's why it's so important to be able to have these conversations yeah. so men can have a standpoint that when they come into contact with somebody like that, they can make decisions by themselves to say like, okay, that's not something for me. Yo, what's good, everybody? We're gonna take a quick pause from this week's amazing episode to talk to you guys about our amazing sponsors over at Skillshare. Guys, Skillshare is a real A1 day one from the roommates, and we absolutely love Skillshare because they are a unique online learning community where men and women can learn all types of creative and entrepreneurial skills. Man, so many men for the past years 
and the roommates have been learning, have been blossoming, have been transforming from Skillshare because not only do you get the first month free to test it out, but Skillshare has such a vast library of courses, of resources that you guys can be able to tap into today. Go to Skillshare.com slash roommates and take advantage of this opportunity. Guys, on the podcast, we meet so many amazing men and women who are so talented, but they didn't get their skills overnight. They had to master these things and Skillshare gives Gives you all the resources that you can be able to master your best self and tap into your full potential. So do not delay. Get on Skillshare today. Go to Skillshare.com slash roommates. Trust me, you'll thank us later. And let's get back to this week's episode. No, that's so powerful, Dr. Bobby, because I mean, I've been really wrestling with this. It all started last year. We, we have a, we have, I know this guy, he's a, he's a human machine. And he has like five businesses, you know, making all this money. And and I was like, you know what? Like I had these goals last year that I wanted to do. And I pushed myself. I really pushed myself. But at one point I was like, I, this this is not me. Because And I realized it was like I was moving at the pace of someone else's song instead of moving at the tempo yeah. I needed to be on. Yep. And so that's when I started wrestling with uh, uh, even re re. Um, how can I say this? Redefining. Redefining. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm, I need to do more sleep. Redefining <laughs> a lot of expectations of um of what of what men are expecting because I think too many guys don't understand their lane. Yeah. And there's no shame in your lane. I think it's it's a serious thing. Like yep. this whole thing that there's some guys who earn ninety thousand dollars a year, and that's great. But it's okay if you're a man who has a great job and a great purpose and you're a teacher making 55 or 60. Yeah. I obviously always want to improve whatever you're doing. So I think what has happened is so many men have this unhealthy stress. And my dad says all the time, I always see you, there's so much in your head. And yeah. You know, like this unhealthy stress to be this super provider. Yep. Exactly. And that stress is, is deteriorating their health. Yep. You know, and, and I thought about it like, for for every for every year of work where you're overstressing your body and you're outside your purpose, I look at it as like you lose like five years of life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like for every year that the, the, the bird is in the ocean trying to swim instead of in the sky trying to fly, yeah. he's missing out on life. And mm-hmm. so I, I'm really glad that you're talking about this because I think it's so connected yeah. and a lot of men don't see it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, like I said, like when I see stuff like that, I'm not that I'm not that person. Like that post isn't talking about me, but it's talking about me. Mm. And, you know, it it really tells me where why men are committing suicide so much. Yeah. It explains it. You know, like if you ask a man if you are tired and you are lost, who do you go to? They usually say, I don't got nobody. Don't nobody want to hear that shit. Yeah. And that's scary. I mean, the, I'm, I ask men who have wives this yeah. and they feel like nobody cares. Mm. And, you know, it's very important for men to get in tune with themselves so that they don't end up in those type of situations mm. because they're scary. Mm. You know, like I've had in the last five years, two friends commit suicide. Oh, wow. I'm sorry yeah. to hear that. Yeah. You understand? So like, it's really important for us to start having these conversations around the pressures and the triggers that are pushing men into that direction. Yeah. You know, I think social media, um, I don't want to always be the person blaming social media, but I think a lot of the visual images of today negatively affect our worldview. Cause I, I have a theory where it's like you you become shaped by what you see. Yeah. And a thousand years ago, you're not seeing the greatest moments of everyone's lives. Mm-hmm. A thousand yeah. years ago, you weren't seeing, you know, freaking perfectly filtered women all the time. You weren't right. seeing these lavish vacations and all these cars. So what that's now shaped people is is like they grow up kind of like with an affluent mindset that they're not growing up with an affluent b- background. Yep. And so now they believe that they're they need to have 
the the Rolls Royces, you yep. know, the Lamborghinis, the uh, high rise penthouses. They need to have these things. So a lot of men are not even comfortable staying in their own lane yep. because they believe they're less of a man if my kids aren't going to the private school. I'm less of a man if my wife don't got the bag for her birthday, you know. Yep. So so then this all this stress. To where a thousand years ago you 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 had your farm you had your family it yep. is what it is you were yep. content and i think that's driving so many people to move outside their purpose yep because they're trying to keep up with the joneses yeah and when you move outside of your purpose you're going to compromise your morals and your uh, your ethics yeah. and your health and your health because that's Very. what we're that's why we're here you yep. know they're compromising all that stuff because yeah. they're trying to work for all the affluent stuff yeah and they don't realize what they're doing and damaging inside their bodies and it's really you know killing our community yeah yeah and people don't under understand that stress is not a benign situation explain that that people think that i stress and then when it goes away i'm good mm. no it leaves a mark you know, and I have these conversations with both men and women. You know, like women, when they have fibroids, I ask them when the fibroids started, most of the time something traumatic happened. You understand? And they got inflamed and they got bigger and they got bigger. The stress was actually creating it because stress creates acidic hormones in mm -hmm. the body, namely cortisol, adrenaline. These are very acidic to the body. And so it's not benign. It's not you know, it's not something that's occurring in the body and it doesn't have an effect. It's, it leaves a mark. And the same way happens with men. You know, that's why men are having strokes. Mm. You know, uh, like me, I'm always trying to tune into things. I'm always out of tune. So I, I have to intentionally tune myself into things. And I was watching this show and this man literally had a heart attack because it's the woman he was with was always arguing and screaming. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of a argument, he had a heart attack. Mm -mm -mm. You understand? And so those are those are things that are showing us like stress can kill you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we really have to get to a point where we realize that we have to create these stress management techniques. Mm -hmm. Because in a world that we live in, stress free life is is not possible. Yeah. But managing it is definitely is. So what are some signs of stress? And then what are some of those stress management techniques that people can follow to reduce that? Yeah. So some signs of stress is when you start to see your behaviors change. Okay. You know, like let's say, for instance, you're going to the gym three to four days a week. And then all of a sudden you don't go to the gym at, anymore at all. Mm -hmm. You know, let's say before that you were waking up in the morning doing a green smoothie. You don't do that at all anymore. You start to lose hair. Mm. You start to lose energy. Your moods shift very quickly. Because when we're good, our moods are very stable. When they start to shift very quickly and you get irritable very quickly, that's also a sign. Man, I <laughs> I think to me, there's um, a lot of guys who are on team fight through it yeah and i love what you talked about with the with the woman i didn't want to go there but now that we're here <laughs> <laughs> i love that because i think there's there's a lot of guys who unfortunately being raised in unhealthy environments they think that this battle between men and women the arguing the back and forth the frustration they think that's normal yeah and and to me i honestly i i this is what I personally believe. I believe every man should ask themselves, what was my life like before she was here? How many arguments was I getting into consistently? How did I feel about myself? How stressed out have I been? How frustrated have I, have I been about myself? Yeah. And then what is life like now that she's here? Yeah. And, and, I, and I think that's something that also contributes to a lot of guys because they just think I'm supposed to just toughen it out. I'm a yeah. man. I got to love her unconditionally, blah, 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 blah. And I and I see that as something that really affects a lot of people's health. Yeah. But a lot of guys, they just view it as, oh, I'm a man. I'm supposed to love her unconditionally. She has her rough days. This is what it is. Yeah. How can people navigate and understand that balance when they're with a partner who's actually really t deteriorating their own health? Yeah. Yeah, and you know, this goes for both men and women. Yeah. But what's important is 
we're we're taught that l- loving ourselves is selfish. Yeah. And especially for men. Yeah. You know, like we're taught like when we love ourselves first, it's selfish. Mm-hmm. And it's so important for us to sort of get rid of that paradigm and shift towards a self-care, self-love paradigm so that we understand that we, when we are in these relationships, I come first. Mm. And what happens is I I (laughs) fill up the cup Mm -hmm. with me first, with love, with self-worth, with self-value. Anything that spills over is for her, my kids, and everybody else. Mm. But you don't pour from your own cup. You keep your cup full. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us don't do that. We're just steadily pouring from our cup and it gets empty. Mm -hmm. And when it gets empty and everybody's taking everything, nobody's going to pour into you because it's just... Unfortunately, it's just, that's not how society is set up. They're not set up to pour into men. I mean, if you go even here in Atlanta and you look up the number of shelters that are for women versus men, I mean, it's probably two or three for men. Total. Yes. Mm, compared to women, probably. Hundred. Wow. Yeah. And so no, you have to understand that as a man, and this is something I teach young men all the time, like nobody cares, but I do. Your brother is going to care. Your mother is going to care. You got to pour into people who, irregardless of what happens, meaning that there are no conditions on their love for you, you got to make sure you pour into those people because when things go bad, those are the people you got to go to and get filled up from. And a lot of us just don't do that. Like, we don't have people we pour into. Mm. So how are they be able to di- 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 differentiate <laughs> the difference between a you know a misunderstanding, an argument, or whatever versus oh this is happening where it's deteriorating my health? Well, the most important thing is you have to set the pace before the relationship begins. Okay. And a lot of us aren't having these conversations in the beginning of our relationships. Like the, the a lot of the arguments are coming from finances. Some of the arguments are coming from You know, the fact that I like to hang out with my friends and you don't got any friends. Mm -hmm. You understand that? Mm -hmm. And now you want me to be like you. Mm -mm -mm. (laughs) And that's an unfair ask. Mm -hmm. You understand? But if we had these conversations in the beginning, like, hey, I noticed you don't have any friends to hang out with. Is that is that intentional or maybe when you get in a relationship, maybe this is something you tend to do, Mm. you know? Um, Well, yeah, that's what I tend to do. Well, I want you to know, like, hanging out with my friends is very important. It's therapeutic for me. Wow. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Listen, (laughs) man. (laughs) This is Dr. Bobby. (laughs) Now we preaching now. Now we preaching. You know, because this is good because it goes back to what you said about being in line with your purpose. Yep. And I love how you use that word therapeutic. Yep. There's there's things, obviously, legal things that are therapeutic for a lot of men. Yeah. And, and I think sometimes when men are in those relationships, you know, a woman would want to remove those things and not realize that these things are therapeutic. Yes. Like, I have a friend who's, when I first saw it, I was kind of taken back by it because I thought it was odd. But now that I'm older, I don't think it's as odd. But he has like a video game system. Yeah. And he has like five kids. Yeah. And so, like, it was odd to see this grown man and his kids just watching. He wasn't playing with her. He was playing himself. Okay, got you. <laughs> he was playing himself. <laughs> and you see him playing the Xbox by himself. His kids watched it, not, kids not are, getting no turn. Right. <laughs> but for him, he, no he needed it. Yeah. Like, this was good for him. And I know why men do that now. Go ahead. Because we're built to challenge ourselves. Yeah. Like, if you don't challenge yourself as a man, you're going to feel lost. Mm. Like, in my opinion, you know, you have to understand, historically, our challenge was the village was being plummeted and we have to go to war. There were certain men they sent out to fight the war and certain men that stayed home to protect the village. Mm. Which one would you have been? (laughs) They sent me out. (laughs) (laughs) They they sent me out. I love it. I love it. And... (laughs) So we're built to be challenged and we define ourselves through our challenge and we discover ourselves through challenging ourselves. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate thing about society today is that in a lot of ways, positive masculinity is being attacked. Mm. And so we can't challenge ourselves in the ways that we used to challenge ourselves. Mm. And as a result, 
we're able to do that through a gaming console when we play Black Ops, mm. when we play NBA 2K. Maybe we didn't make the high school basketball team, but we can kill an NBA player mm -hmm. on NBA yeah. 2K. Yeah. So we're finding our, now redefining ourselves through gaming consoles, but it still leaves a void because we're not used to doing that mentally. We have to do it physically as well. Mm. Yeah, like what are some more healthy therapeutic things or challenges that men can do? Because I think it's a blur line where they think of challenge, yeah. they think of like work, they think of providing, that leads to stress. Right. So what are some therapeutic challenges that yeah. they need? There you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, I'm like, just saying, man. I, I grew up like, my cousins would just come behind me and like, boom, yes, just throw yes. me on the back WWE, of my neck. WWE, it is what so, it is. Yeah, definitely not that type of challenge, <laughs> but <laughs> challenging themselves mentally by reading. Yeah. Like men need to get back to reading. Yes. You know, we used to be the ones who would read and then educate our family. Mm -hmm. We used to be the scholars in our family. Yeah, that's a good point. And now we're not passing on wisdom. So we need to get back to reading because that's going to challenge us mentally. So that's mm -hmm. the most important challenge that we need to do. But the other thing is also challenging ourselves physically. Mm. You know, that doesn't have to mean you, you you become good at basketball or golf or anything like that. You can literally say, I'm going to do 200 push-ups a day. Mm. You know, that mental challenge of I'm going to get down on the floor and I'm going to get to 50 and I'm going to be stressed and I'm going to tell myself I don't want to do this anymore, but I'm going to do it anyway. Mm. That does something for a man. Yeah. Yeah. So even those simple things like that are very important too. But the other way that's probably unorthodox in terms of like challenging ourselves, but I think is really important, is to challenge ourselves emotionally too. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things like when I saw that show with the guy who had the heart attack, you know, you know, with his wife, because they were just arguing so much. Like I cried, mm. you know, like not because I'm soft, like I, I can use these, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I felt him, yeah. like I, I felt him and then understanding the background to it. And so challenging, challenging ourselves emotionally to be more vulnerable. And I tell people all the time, you got to have courage as a man to be vulnerable today. To. It yeah. takes courage. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm challenging myself in that way too. So those are some of the challenges I would no, recommend. No, I, I, I love I love what you said um, with the challenge uh, emotionally. I think what happens is, you know, it's such a challenge because you have to be so sure of yourself yeah. to tell someone that you're weak in a moment because you know that you are strong. Yeah but you happen to be weak. Because yeah. cause if you're not sure of yourself, you, by saying you're weak, you're afraid that people will believe that you're weak, right. and now you're a weak person. So yeah. I love what you said. You know, all of this really reminds me, and it and there's just so many layers I would like to go with you, but I think this is a good place to transition to this as well, is that one of the things that men have been struggling with today that is another silent killer, not in a killing sense where it's like people are passing out and dying, but it's killing the masculinity and the masculine essence of a man is the testosterone. Yeah. And there is a lot of people talking about testosterone today yeah. that they were not talking about it within the past 20 or 30 years. Right. And so um, what are some of the challenges that men face with testosterone and what are the difference in testosterone levels from the past and the ones that are today man it is a huge shift in what things were mm. and before i get into that let me say this it's important for men to know that you know we have this sort of mental view of what testosterone is we think it provides muscle and gives us that mm -hmm. right but testosterone also defines who you are too. Mm. And what I mean by that is when your testosterone is low, you won't have energy. You won't have motivation. You won't be ambitious. You'll lose your hair. You'll develop a gut. You won't be able to build muscle even if you go to the gym. Mm. You understand? You'll be depressed. Mm. So it literally changes who we are. You understand? And a lot of men are struggling today and they're experiencing, as I'm naming off those things, a lot of men are like, good That's grief. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is good. Development of man boobs, gynecomastia. Mm. 
Mm. You understand? Like I've had friends reach out to me and say, man, I got boobs. And these are men who work out in the gym and all they do is bench and they still can't (laughs) get rid of it. You understand? So it's really important for men to know that a lot of the issues, erectile dysfunction, it goes on and on. A lot of the things that they're experiencing is a result of that. Mm. Now, the reason why it's so low today is for a number of reasons. A lot of times when people are having this conversation, they always pinpoint one thing and health just it just doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. And so it is multifaceted. But the other big issue before I get into the things that actually lead to low testosterone is that the way it's diagnosed. Mm. Like when you go into the doctor, you know, what's considered normal today is a testosterone between 250 and 300. Mm. That's some, that's semi-normal. Mm. That's That may be normal, but that's sub-therapeutic. And what I mean by that is you will not get the effects of what a normal testosterone would have, meaning mm. you won't develop a belly, you can develop muscle, you won't be depressed, you will have motivation, you will have ambition. Mm-hmm. So having that low number that they consider normal is a big part of the issue too. Mm. So when men go in and they have a testosterone of 350, they think they're good. They're like, well, your testosterone is fine. It's on the lower end, but Mm. you're fine. They don't address the issue. So that's a huge part of it right there. What's a normal testosterone level in your opinion? In my opinion, if you're not at least 600 or above, yeah. And it, but it's all it's multifaceted because I can test your testosterone and it be 600, but you could be converting a lot of your free testosterone into estrogen in the body mm. because you have a lot of fat. And when you have a lot of fat, there's an enzyme called aromatase. It converts your testosterone into estrogen. Mm. That's why men will develop man boobs, gynecomastia. Mm. That's why they'll not be able to actually, you know, grow muscle or and build muscle. That's mm. why they'll lose their hair and their body hair too. Mm. You understand? So it's, it, it's really difficult uh, to kind of gauge what's normal for somebody else. But like I was having a conversation with my friend and you know I was telling him my testosterone was 850. And he was like, well, what's the high end? I was like, it's about a thousand. And he was like, you know, how often do you see somebody with a thousand? I was like, it's rare. You know, but it's rare because of all of these things that are in place today. Mm. You understand? And so it's really important for men to understand that when your testosterone is low, it's going to change who you are as a person. Mm. You understand? So I think we, let's let's talk about some things that. Yes, please. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my follow up question. <laughs> the testosterone yeah, will get low. Yeah. One of the most dangerous things that will lower your testosterone is this belly. Mm. Mm. When you develop a belly, that says a lot of things about your health. But one of the things that it's saying is that you have a lot of fat in this area. It's called visceral fat. Now the fat that's on your arm that you pinch here, that's called subcutaneous. That fat isn't as dangerous and is easy to get rid of. But this fat here is very difficult to get rid of and is very toxic to the body. Mm. It literally is a living organ releasing toxins to the body. Wow, mm. Okay. That's a- Crazy way to put it. Yep, and it also, like I mentioned before, it will start to create estrogen in the body too. Mm. And the important thing to understand is as this fat grows in this area, it's putting pressure on all the organs, the vital organs in this area. Mm. Not just your gut, but your heart, your liver, your kidneys, your reproductive organs, Mm -hmm. okay? So as that belly drops, it's it's pushing down on your reproductive organs. Mm -hmm. So then men, Sort start to get erectile dysfunction. Yep. Because yeah, you can't get blood flow with all that pressure being pushed down. Make sense? Yes. So it's important to get rid of that belly fat. And a lot of times people will call it a beer belly. Yeah. Or dad bod. Yeah. yeah. But the 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 reason why they call it a beer belly is because alcohol will actually produce fat and estrogen oh, in the mind. gut. So it really literally is a beer belly because hops that is used in beer produces estrogen. So I assume you don't drink alcohol anymore. I, I stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and again, like this is no judgment. Yeah. Like I'm, this is all about education, but this, the belly is one of the things. Mm. Stress. Stress will produce cortisol, 
which is a stress hormone. It will produce adrenaline, but mainly cortisol, okay? And what's really important to understand is that as you're producing these stress hormones, you have to remember testosterone is a hormone too. So instead of using the healthy fat, because that's the backbone of all hormones, instead of using the healthy fat to actually met testosterone, you're making stress hormones. Mm. So that will lower your testosterone as well. Man, I'm over here pinching my arm. Yeah. Right? I'm trying to figure out what we got going on around here. You know what I mean? So what are some ways that, healthy ways that men can boost their testosterone? What do they need to do? Yeah. Step step one through whatever you, 100. Yeah, so one of the most important things is changing how you eat. You know, like people think that meat is manly, but it actually, it can lower your testosterone. Like I said before, a lot of the meat that you're eating has hormones in it, okay? Those hormones aren't testosterone, mm. okay? A lot of times it's estrogen. So you're eating estrogen, Wow. okay? You're eating antibiotics, which kill the, the good ba bacteria in your gut. You're eating, you know, also, you know, um, a, a huge array of other things like the soy and the, the genetically modified corn that I, I mentioned before. So eating a lot of meat, which is also going to contribute to this gut because meat just doesn't digest like veggies do. And so it's going to make this gut bigger. As this gut gets bigger, it's going to produce more fat. More fat is going to produce more estrogen. So eating healthy, making sure that when you look at your plate, like I can't, I know all men aren't going to go plant-based. I, I, <laughs> uh, yeah, like, I would urge you to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you look at your plate, the meat needs to consist of a very small portion of your plate. It needs to be veggies on your plate. You're talking about six ounces, eight ounces? <laughs> Man, I'm talking about less than this palm. Oh, you talking like four. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to measure what we got going on. So okay. eating healthy is a, a vital part because, you know, the other real issue is that also the, like, 70% of the foods in the supermarket are processed and refined. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at that label, it looks like chemistry, bro. Yeah. And a lot of times soy is in that in that label too because it's a cheap byproduct that they can always use as a filler. Mm. You know, and so it's important to know that when you eat a lot of processed foods, a lot of that is going to contribute to the toxicity. Toxicity mm. hides out in fat. Mm. Mm. Okay. It makes fat grow too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fat grows, estrogen grows. Okay. And as the estrogen goes up in your body, it's going to make your testosterone go down. Okay. So, and you know, those are the primary things. I mean, I can, there's a long list, but if you address those things that I think that's the beginning part of the journey. So, you know, I'm, I'm not sold on the meat. <laughs> I'm listening to you. I'm letting you share. You know, you letting me have the platform. I'm, I'm, I'm listening because I, I, I really, I really wonder in regards to the testosterone conversation. Two fifty to three fifty being normal, and you believe normal should be six hundred. Yeah. What is the number? Do you think the number one thing that's causing that 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 sharp dip is food? Yeah, well, okay. you gotta think about it. The to make any hormone, you need healthy fat, you need enzymes, you need nutrients to be able to make it. And a lot of our hormones are made in organs. Okay, those organs have to be healthy. You understand? They're made in glands. They have to be healthy. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's you know it's a very holistic picture involved, but. I mean, if you were to make a recipe in the kitchen and you didn't have the primary ingredient, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're not making any of it. You understand? So, so is it true that working out increases testosterone? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. But if you have a if you have a testosterone deficiency, yeah. you gotta remember what I said. You will not be able to produce muscle. Mm. And muscle is what creates the testosterone testosterone mm. you understand yes, and so if you're already in a deficit and you're trying to just go to the gym and work it out yeah you can't do it because you're you're behind the eight ball okay you see what i'm saying so hmm. i guess what i'm wondering is that and maybe 
I'm, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, such yourself. So I'm just giving all my pseudoscience out here. For sure. <laughs> it's good because like these are questions that men have. Yeah. Because I'm thinking about 18 years old, we're playing college football, we're playing college sports. We're eating all kinds of, you know, For food. Sure. Especially a lot of meat. Yeah. Going to the gym, we're all getting gains. Yeah. We're all getting stronger. We're all getting, we're all, you know, becoming in a sense, healthier, we're running, we're we're doing well. How how do you rationalize what's going on for the college athlete in their diets and how they're able to grow and and, and I'm glad and you asked. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Well, what you have to understand when you're younger, your organ systems are more efficient at getting rid of things. So one of the ways that you get rid of estrogen out of the body is through your liver. Mm-hmm. Most people don't have a healthy liver by the time they're in their thirties anymore. All them Hennessy. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> All them shots, the yeah. Hennessy, yeah. you know, the tequila, yeah. you know, the 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 porterhouse steaks, like yeah. all of that stuff adds up. Mm-hmm. And so fatty liver disease didn't even exist. Wow. You know, in the 1980s, like it was called alcoholic fatty liver. Mm-hmm. But now fatty fatty liver disease is more prevalent than the alcoholic liver. Mm. And it's not be- just because of alcohol. It's because of the foods that people are eating. They're so toxic to the liver that it's causing the liver to be cirrhosis, meaning like it's scarred. And so it can't perform in the way that it needs to perform. And as a result, it begins to gain fat tissue. Okay. Mm -hmm. And fat, and like I told you before, fat is always going to attract toxicity because that's where toxicity hides out inside of fat. It's just like if I had like a bowl of jello here and I had mercury in a syringe, if I put that mercury in your hand, like it could kill you because it's gonna absorb in the body. Mm -hmm. Like in the hospital, if we dropped like a huge thermometer, that we would have the hazmat team come in, you know, to clean it up. Mm -hmm. But if I take that that mercury, inject it inside of the jello, I can play with the jello, no Mm -hmm. problem. That's what happens with fat tissue in our bodies. Mm -hmm. And so we begin to absorb more toxicity and more toxicity and these organ systems become less efficient. You got to think like a 16, 17 year old kids, they're having two, three bowel movements a day. Mm-hmm. You know, eating trash. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're working out. You know what I'm How saying? How many times should you move your bowels a day? You should move a bowel every time you eat. So if you eat two times a day, you should have a bowel movement two times that, a day. Is that how it is for you? You got to an answer. I'm just curious. Indeed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the indeed. It's hilarious. Oh, brother, indeed. It's nothing behind me, nothing backed up. Nothing's working just fine. All right. So if you don't move your bowels every day, it's not a good sign, huh? Again, you have to remember if, because most people have between 10 and 25 pounds of undigested fecal matter just sitting in their gut. Mm, you see what I'm saying? How do you get rid of that? You, I'll talk about that in a second, but right. just think about it. You have three meals a day, mm-hmm. right? Seven days a week, that's 21 meals. That's a lot of meals. And most people have three bowel movements a week. <laughs> no. Yeah. Most that's most people only have Most three. people are constipated, brother. Yeah. Like, <laughs> since you asked me, how many bowel movements do you have a day? Here we go. Depends what I... Then kind of day we're talking about. Give me, is that on, on average? average? On average. Every every other day. Every other day. That's yeah. three to four bowel movements a week. Yeah. Dang, you really, dang. I'm just, just keeping yeah. it real. People yeah. don't think about it yeah. because like poo is taboo. Yeah. Like people don't have those conversations. Yeah. Like you get with your girl. Y'all don't have sex talk before you have sex. You have sex and then you talk about sex. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so just think about that. You have... Four about let's say five bowel movements a week. You had twenty one meals. Where the hell is the other sixteen bowel movements? People just thinking that it just broke down in the stomach. Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought. Yeah. 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 Uh, I have a detox, mm-hmm. and the de- the detox works. Mm-hmm. Do you okay. Know. Do I need to take it over the weekend and like you know what I mean? Do I need time? Because well, if I have to work, I got a detox, and it just come out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Well, well, it's kind of wild. Well, what what I explain to people is that it's an urgency, not an emergency. Okay, I mean it's like, like it's, it's gonna say mm-hmm. it's like saying like, hey, bro, we gotta go. Yeah, and if you say I get to you, then it, it's gonna be a problem. 
But if you go, you're going to be fine. Okay, now, I've I had see. bus drivers, you. flight attendants, even a congressman do my detox. So just go when you need to go and that's it. Listen to your body. <laughs> so herbal detoxing is very important. And, you know, that's why I made the transition from pills to plants because I started to realize the power of plants in the form of herbs. Mm. Because herbs are designed to remove heavy metals. They're designed to remove mucus. They're designed to push out that bile waste that's accumulating there that is called a, a gut, but really is like you're full of poop. There it is. There it is. Yeah. I'm glad you cleared up the herb because I know some people listening and they think herb on a whole different <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, when yeah. you say like my mom was like, you know, me and my great grandmother, you know. Exactly. They she think, did that and herb. Yeah, they yeah. think like, <laughs> they think on a whole holistic level. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> not, not the Snoop Dogg modality. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so basically, so basically what you're communicating is that like when you're younger, your body's functioning on such a higher level that yes. you're not doing what's ideal, but because your body's functioning so well, is able to manage it. But then as you get older, that's when you start to see all the effects of your less than ideal lifestyle, which yes. is causing all these remainder of these issues. And define uh, age. Because I, I feel like when I got to turn 25, some, it, yes. it, 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 it just doesn't it's, happen. And it's different for everybody. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's different for everybody because everybody's toxic threshold level is different. Mine's very high. Mine's yeah. So if you, a lot of people, and well, like for instance, you'll see somebody who's obese and overweight over here, which seventy percent of the American population is either obese or overweight. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you'll see somebody obese over here, and then you see somebody skinny, and the skinny person will say, "Well, I'm healthier than them." That's actually not always true. I know mm. because there's a condition called well, there's a, what we call it is TOFI. It's thin on the outside fat on the inside wowzers mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and i told you how dangerous fat could be so you could look thin but your body composition is mainly fat mm. and in those situations those people are even more dangerous because they believe that they're healthier yeah because yeah. they don't see the fat on the outside yeah and so that's that's what's happening with a lot of these young athletes is that you know like for them their livers are functioning you know, at a high level, the kidneys are functioning at a high level. So those are the two of the primary, you know, uh, detoxification organs. Mm -hmm. But over time, just like a car, yeah. you know, you start, it starts to, it starts with a little bit of this and then yeah. a little bit of that. And all of a sudden there's a oil leak. And then all of a sudden it's a transmission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You understand? And it's just wear and tear over time. Now, yeah. Sheesh. Now this is great, man. I really, I really enjoy this conversation. I think it's a, it's a very holistic message mm -hmm. um, because I think a lot of men who are having so many issues, yeah. they're not realizing how every single thing is interconnected. Yeah. And I love how you broke a lot of these things down and I, and I love how you're emphasizing the importance of healthy testosterone levels yeah. um, to a lot of men. So if you were to give a, a message in closing um, for, the, for the 30 year old guy, yeah. He works 80 hours a week. He's trying to, you know, build this legacy and he has he feels all this pressure to be successful. He's not taking care of his health. What would be your closing message to a guy like that? I would say like, you know, and because I'm now trying to talk to my 30 year old self because I was that yeah. like most of my friends remember me not sleeping. Mm. Like there were friends who never saw me sleep. Mm. Like I was grinding that that hard mm -hmm. and so what i would say to you is that use this because trying to use this is it's such a slower route and the side effects of using that it it unfortunately will deteriorate your body and you won't able to be able to enjoy life mm -hmm. the way you are meant to enjoy life how can you use this instead of this well, one of the things is you have to have a plan and men don't do that very well. You have to have a plan and a vision. See, I had a vision for my life. Mm -hmm. And because I had a vision, I could see where I wanted to go with everything. I knew I wanted to write a book. I knew I wanted to start a wellness company. And I knew that it was going to take a lot of effort to get, to get there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And because I had this vision, it allowed me to say no to certain opportunities mm -hmm. very quickly versus getting myself involved in, in them, going so hard for somebody else, and it's not being a part of my actual vision in life. Mm -hmm. 
And so it's really important for us to get to that point where we have a vision for ourselves and then we can create a plan, a structured plan, step by step plan to get there and understand that that plan is not going to be the same plan in a year or even three months. It's going to change. Yeah. You know, and it's going to change because as you do more, you put in your 10,000 hours. What you're going to discover is the 10,000 hours are going to shorten the, the plan for you. Mm-hmm. And so it's important for men to sort of get that in their brain because there's so many things you could do out here. You got people like Stefan who's killing it in the relation relationship industry. You got people over here killing it in the financial industry and it all looks good. Yeah. But if it's not aligned with you, that's great. You are going to work yourself to the bones for all nothing. Mm. Mm. Because you're going to achieve the money maybe. And if you achieve the money, you're not going to appreciate it. You're not going to feel fulfilled by it. I love it. You see what I'm saying? That's great. So where can they reach you at, Dr. Bobby? Yeah, yeah. So I'm on Instagram as Dr. Holistic, D-O-C-T-O-R-H-O-L-I-S-T-I-C. Also, drbobbyprice.com, drbobbyprice.com. Also on YouTube, you can just Google me, Dr. Bobby Price. Um, So, yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you for yeah. this conversation. Yeah. I learned a lot. You know what I mean? I'm definitely going to get checked up. I'm checking up all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not playing around. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, you, yeah, man. For yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, guys, know we get down here at the roommates. Please be sure to reach out to Dr. Bobby. Let him know what about this podcast stood out to you. My name is Hafiz. Chris is the show, baby. And we're joined by Dr. Bobby Price. We're the roommates. And have a great day. <laughs>